Okay, first of all, it gives me an absolute great privilege and honour to welcome you to our partnership evenings. Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all parents, carers, community members for their tremendous support over what has been a really difficult um, six months. Um, Covid and lockdown has you know, hit us all extremely hard um, in terms of the continuity for our students, in terms of um, you know, continuity of teaching and learning and it has absolutely been a wonderful experience coming back to school and opening the doors again to see our, our pupils. We really, really have missed them. And, you know, a massive thank you to yourselves as parents for all your continued support. You know, we've kept in touch um, sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes uh, monthly, just to make sure that, you know, in terms of uh, education and continuity of learning and in terms of pastoral care guidance and support, your, your son or daughter um, has, been, has been looked after over these uh, past few months. But we're back now, it's September and we're looking forward, although under very different and difficult circumstances, to continuing that quality of education for all our students in year 7 right through to year 11 and we promise to give them the very, very best of opportunities. So I hope today as we go through the different slides and the different presentations that there is a wealth of knowledge that you'll take from the, to today's partnership evening and if there are any questions or concerns please do not hesitate but to get back in touch with the year leaders for each specific year group um, and we will only be too happy to help. Thank you again for your continued support and I hope you find the information useful. Uh, good evening, welcome to Year 9 Partnership Evening. Uh, my name is Mr Ogden, I'm the Assistant Head Teacher uh, within the Academy looking after climate, culture and behaviour. Also the SLT link for the Year 9 team. Uh, I'd just like to hand you over to Mr Kelly, who's Head of Year in terms of teaching staff for Year, for year 9, and Mr Ashton, who's Head of Year for looking after all your pastoral support. Thank you sir. Uh, most of you know who I am. Um, I'm Mr Ashton, as Mr Ogden has pointed out. We're going to go into key dates, so, key, so your baseline assessments will be on the 14th of September, so they your baseline assessments for your children where we determine what levels they need to be for, to, to determine the work that we can set in place for them through the coming year. Year 9 parents evening, it's an important date for the diary, it's the 28th of January, we will communicate that with you nearer the time in terms of how to book appointments and, and, and how to do that with di different teaching staff and myself and Mr Kelly. Year 9 options evening, that's a very important one this year, will be, on, will be the 2nd and the 4th of March and we'll split that out individually into individuals so you, you'll get that through, through the post. Um, reports home will be on three different dates, with three different pupil progress reports, be on the 3rd of December, the 18th of March and then the final one on the 14th of July. Clearly we'll be in touch with you throughout the year to, to let you know how your son or daughter is getting on, but until that point you'll be getting those reports. Attendance is something that, as most of the young people and, and probably you guys are aware of, um, we're really hot on in our year group. We've got the best attendance in the school, we've maintained that for this year, and it's something that we want to maintain and progress and get better at. Um, this is where we should be, this is the, this is the national average which we, we expect pupils to be at above 96%. If we if you're between 90, 97% and 100%, we don't see that as a risk. If you're at 94 to 96.9%, .9%, you are at risk of underachieving and you're going to miss out on important learning time. If you're at 92 to 93%, then you're at serious risk of underachieving and anything below that. So 90, below 90% is a severe risk and below that is where, where we can sort of look at how, what, what's going on there. So we need to make sure that, that pupils are in, in lessons, in front of teaching staff and learning. That's, that's the absolute best place for your children to be. Sir, now I'll hand over to Sir now to talk to you about the different curricular areas. Thank you, Sir. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening, uh, Year 9 Parents and Carers. I'm just going to talk to you about uh, the curriculum that we follow at Royden Crompton, um, outlining all of the subject areas and basically what happens within those subject areas. So, from the get-go, we have all of our core subjects, so English, Maths and Science, and I'll just go into a little bit more detail about what will be happening in each of those subjects, and then, of course, talking about option subjects 
as we get later on throughout the year. So in English currently, year nine, pupils will be given a homework booklet that will be set weekly. That does need to be completed weekly as it's a really important part of the curriculum. We expect pupils to complete reading each night for a minimum of 20 minutes. And that can be a book, that can be a magazine, that can be an online journal article. It doesn't have to be sitting down with you know, a massive book. It can be any type of reading material, obviously uh, curriculum led. We ask parents to sign journals to acknowledge the reading is being done. So uh, parents or carers can just sign that. That makes things a lot easier for us to see the progress of pupils. Uh, pupils should be uh, reading their book to English every Friday. So they should be bringing that in every Friday. So it's very much around reading for English and English literature. Over to maths now. Maths is one of the really important subjects in our curriculum. Um, year 9 will follow Hegarty and do all sorts of different mathematical uh, uh, equations, sums, all the rest of it. So people can investigate, hypothesise, prove and generalise using problem solving to reason aspects of overarching mathematical components. It is quite in depth what they do in year 9 maths and again it's the foundation GCSE year group so extremely important. All these slides will be on the school website as well so if you want to read them in more detail you're very welcome to. Uh, in science, very similar to the other core subjects, you've got your homework which will be completed on a regular basis. Science also uses knowledge organisers so people can have the knowledge in front of them. The 10 big ideas in year 9 uh, science are um, the waves, assessments and how test views ideas are currently seen as well as big ideas they have previously learned. So building on from year 7, year 8 going into year 9 and they will do all that as well. And then careers as well. So careers is a really important part in science and the science staff will help children look at what is going on in careers if they want to follow a career in science. Over to the creative department now. So these are some option subjects for year 9 pupils as they're going into the option year group. Um, art, drama, music are all really, really popular subjects at Royden Crompton. I, myself, am the drama teacher in this school. And then you've got the two art ladies who will take them through a really detailed art curriculum. And then Mrs. Bloor and Mrs. Mulgrew follow a BTEC in music as well, so a highly practical subject. In fact, all three of these subjects are highly practical. With the exception of drama, drama does have quite a heavy theory base to it as well. Over to ICT. Uh, ICT is, is covered all over the world now and it really is one of the most important subjects we teach here at Royden and Crompton because ICT is now, it's the future and it's beyond. So they all learn different types of thing there, things there as well and the programme uh, language named Python is one of the pilots that we use here. Spanish, we do one subject MFL, so Modern Foreign Languages at Royden and Crompton. The expectations is that obviously all pupils have all their pencils out on the desk and they will learn a variety of different vocabulary phrases and also you will learn about the history of Spain as well. So with a particular focus on Barcelona, uh, the pupils will be learning a lot about that in Spanish. History, so history, uh, they will be studying things like World War I and they will also study the rise of Hitler, the Holocaust, the Cold War and the end of the Empire. Again, there are these slides available for you to have a look at should you wish to, and there's more details on there as well. In year nine geography, so they learn a lot about climate, plastic, uh, hazards uh, of the weather, ecosystems, and also learn about some Russian geography as well. So a real breadth of knowledge there from the geography department, which is great to see. I'm now gonna hand over to Mr. Ashton once again, and he's gonna discuss uh, the subject of PE and a few of the requirements that PE have in their department. Yeah, PE will, will be slightly different this year, and I'll go through that in more detail. Um, the, the PE boy, the, the kit doesn't change, the, 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 the way we wear that kit does. Uh, so the boys, it's the, the PE shirt, the shorts, the football socks, and astro trainers. So we don't want you to come in in studs, it'll damage the astro turf, it'll damage the 3G surface. We need to be astro trainers or indoor trainers if, if you've got those. Uh, girls PE shirt, the, the, the shorts. Sensible shock socks or football socks and Astro, again, the same footwear. Now, one of the things that, that's going to be different this year is the way that we get changed. So we're going to have some adaptive routines of what we do in, in PE. Um, arriving to school in your PE kit being the main one. If your son or daughter knows that they've got PE that day, the, or the day after, should I say, they need to be coming into school in their PE kit, which they will stay in for the remainder of the day. Um, they will, they're alive there, they'll get greeted by the, the, the teacher, they'll, and then any valuables will be handed in without fuss, bags left in classrooms, then they'll be escorted to where, where they're going to be doing that. Now, 
I have had a few phone calls and a few queries about girls and about what they can and can't wear. It's exactly the same for girls that they, they can wear for boys. They can wear plain blue tracksuit bottoms that they can, they can wear and they can make sure that they're warm for the day. Um, jackets they can wear, all the, all the, the, the Ronin Crompton jacket or a plain jacket. That's all on the, on the uniform policy, on the website, and it's all available from Zutti. What can't I do in PE? So, in the current situation, um, we need to make sure that you're in, in constant communication with school. If there's a reason why your son or daughter can't do PE, then you need to let the year team know, so that would be either myself or Mr Kelly, uh, and you need to just let us know and we can arrange that with the PE department and we can sort something out within school. Um, you must bring your kit, even if you're injured, you need to wear your kit. Now the reason for that is because with us being in our bubbles and making sure that we can, we, we can make sure that people are safe, that you will be going together. So you will go with your class and you will do different learning and will adapt that to suit your needs, but you must wear your kit. Medical, so inhalers, you should be doing this anyway, but if you've got asthma or a need where you need an inhaler, you should be bringing a spare into school. The medical office does have a, a spare supply of inhalers, but we, need, we have 1,200 pupils at this school and we need to make sure that you've got your own individual inhalers. If you haven't got those, please go to your doctor and get a spare inhaler for school. Um, you need to bring those for PE in particular. If you're injured, you go to the, the teacher, they're all first aid trained and we've also got first aid staff on site. The, the teacher will deal with that and they'll come and sort that out for you. Um, the first aider's job will then be to make contact with parents and, and sort of go through the risk assessment and what we've done about that. Now, if there's any, if there's any further questions, you know where I am and you know where Mr Keller are, contact the school on the school number and contact the Year 9 office. This year we're having a real push. We, we, want us, we, we, we maintain our mantra of being the best year group in the best school in Oldham and that's what we really want for, for your young people and for, and for us as a school. Now it's a really important year that we pick the options at the end of this year and there will be a lot of questions and a lot of communication that goes on between ourselves and you. That will be communicated throughout the year. So I just want to say thank you very much parents and carers for joining us this evening and we really look forward to seeing you very, very soon. From myself and Mr Ashton, thank you very much. Very good evening to you all. Good evening, my name is Mr Ogden, I'm the Assistant Teacher in Charge of Climate, Culture, uh, Behaviour and Expectations. I'm going to take you through a bit of a PowerPoint presentation today. Uh, I know some of it might not be clear on the camera, but we'll put that on the website for your perusal and obviously the behaviour policies on there. So first of all, we're just looking at our expectations. Uh, we expect every young person to arrive promptly for school. Uh, I know there's various bubble start times at the moment, starting from 8.30, but we do expect young people to be there and prompt on time. Uh, every morning. To be fully equipped for lessons at all time, which means if they've got PE, they have the PE kit. If they've got the lessons, uh, the equipment for the lessons, they must have a pen, pencil, a green pen for underlining, ruler, your maths equipment, your projector, and your planners, which are a working document for every lesson. To wear full school uniform at all times, uh, that includes school shoes, uh, skirts to be at the correct length with the Royal and Crompton logo. If we are in PE kit in these changing times where young people are coming in PE kit that they do have the Ryder Crompton shorts, the Ryder Crompton football socks or they are playing blue uh, equipment. To show respect for self and others, and that goes for all staff, visitors and students, we expect staff to speak to students with respect, students to speak with students with respect, hold doors, be polite, don't drop litter and that's something that we, we really expect and we really drive and encourage our young people to be like, to res respond positive and politely to all instructions from members of staff. At times young people will be asked to do things that, that necessarily they, they, they don't agree with but we expect them to respond positively and that those instructions will always be uh, for the good of the learning for the whole group and that individual. To work to the best of ability at all times, we're in a brand new building to respect property, to make sure that when we're travelling down corridors that we don't touch the walls, you know, we, we look after doors, we make sure that we pick up litter, we don't graffiti on desks and to encourage that community sense of team, it's like their home away from home to make sure that we respect the building and everybody in it. To uphold the expectations within the local and wider community, you know, we're very, very proud of our uniform, we're proud of our young people, so when they're travelling to and from school, that they're representing you as parent and carers, and in our uniform they're representing those honesty, those, that excellence and our modelling excellence out in the community. Uh, we do have a behaviour policy that long, runs alongside all these expectations to make sure that young people are employable you know, and, and they, 
we do understand that whatever we go through life there will be rules and there will be consequences if you step outside of those so well, I'll take you through those in a second. Just a quick example of the uniform, the, you know skirts must be knee length with the right across and logo, our black shot, black socks, they must have uh, a black school shoe, a leather school shoe with no bright logos or different colours on it. Hair must be a correct colour, a uh, natural colour and no shade patterns in it and the PE kit is modelled that's on there as well. We, are, we operate something called Q which is coach, uniform and equipment. They are monitored every day during lessons. Uh, we expect our young people to have the shirts tucked in, to have the blazers on and corridors. They get three opportunities to make sure that's right. Uh, they have a Q card in the, in the planner. If the one of those expectations aren't met, there is a staff signature on. Three signatures will lead to a consequence. But likewise, if there's no signatures on that, the young people get to put those into a prize draw where they get vouchers for doing the right things and, and displaying that corporate image, which again is pre preparing them and ready for that world of work. Basic expectations that we expect in and around the academy. So we Anywhere young people enter the building, we expect them to take the coats off and either put them in the bag or under their arms so they're only wearing the school uniform in and around the, the, the academy. Appropriate school footwear, there's no trainers allowed at all within school. Skirt length, as we discussed before, is knee length. Our blazers have to be worn at all times. Once in classrooms, if the young people are hot and they want to take the blazers off, they ask the member of staff permission, they, they will always be granted that. But when we're travelling, in between lessons and at break times, blazers are to be worn. School tie has to be worn. They're separate colours for different year groups to give them their identity. Hair is a natural colour. We know what the school equipment is. We provided that as a school. We expect parent carers home to support that to ensure that learning can take place. And under no circumstances, there are no false nails or nail varnish to be allowed in school. Just take you through the behaviour system. If young people make the right decisions and they put the learning first and they follow the instructions, that we, this will never ever apply to them, they will only ever be rewarded in school. But if, you know, we're very, very, very big on that teachers have to teach and learners have the right to learn, and nobody in this school has the right to stop another young person or a group of young people learning. And if that is the case, then we do operate a C1 to a C4 behaviour system. C1 is a warning with an instruction uh, and an expectation of what the young person has done wrong, some take up time for them to improve. Uh, again for a C2 that's in effect a final warning uh, to allow that, that young person to focus and put the learning first. If they reach the next stage, so they're disrupting learning or there's a serious one-off incident, there is something called a C3 removal, which that young person will then be exited from lesson and will be educated in time out within their year bubble. Uh, at which point that will be investigated by the year team. Depending on the series of that, they might go then back into their lesson and continue for the day, or they might be taken out and educated in a period of reflection. Uh, parents will always be contacted, uh, and most of the time there will be a phone call to have that discussion with parents about working together as a team to make sure that our young people are modelling what's done at home and they put the learning first in our lessons. C4s are a serious incident. Uh, which are a serious breach of the behaviour policy and they can be dealt with either internal exclusion, a period of learning at another school or in extreme circumstances uh, an exclusion from a school, a fixed term. Okay, detentions. Uh, if a young person is removed for disrupting learning or, or other areas of a C3 then they will operate a detention after school that day. Uh, the detention will be for a period of an hour. If a young person occurs more than one C3 in a day, that can equate to a, an SLT detention, which is an hour and a half. Detention cut-off point for the same day detentions is 2 o'clock. You'll receive a text message that will be sent home to notify that your young person will be in detention that night. This, this strict rules in that they will be in their certain bubble detentions across their bubble within school. They have to be sat up in silence. And if they've got homework, they can do the homework, otherwise we will provide work for them to complete. Can you skip that, please? Okay, just moving on to your mobile phone, just to make it sure to everyone. We know that every young person in this academy will have a mobile phone. And we understand as parent or carers that it's essential for young people to have mobile phones travelling to and from the academy for safety to get in touch with them. 
but as soon as they enter our, our doors we expect that phone to be turned off, switched off, zipped in a blazer pocket or placed in the bag. Uh, as we touched on before, the reason for that is that we expect when we're in school for them to develop the manners, to develop the social, we don't want them texting on phones but we also want them no distractions from the learning. We expect every young person to maximise that learning time and put the learning first. If a young person does get the phone out, it will be confiscated, it's held in the school safe and we will contact you for a convenient time for you to come and collect that. Punctuality, again the most important part of lessons at times are that introduction uh, and that beginning which allows people to understand their outcomes and objectives and the success criteria about where they're going in that lesson. Every young person to get anywhere within this building within three minutes. But we do have a cut off time of five minutes. If you're late for school by five minutes, or if you're late for a lesson by five minutes because they've not been uh, proactive enough on the corridors of getting to where they should be, that we do allocate a late mark, which will also allocate a late detention, which is an hour after school that day. Rewards. We operate uh, quite a fast reward system from R1 all the way to R5. Every student has the opportunity uh, to meet the folks of the week, whether that be listening to the person who's talking uh, or meeting that criteria, they get an R1 every lesson. Uh, students are able to get an R2, which is going above and beyond, an excellent piece of homework, uh, being a great community citizen. And then there's also students at the start of the week which are voted through by members of staff. So every member of staff will put through somebody who's gone above and beyond or made uh, you know, the correct amount of effort or gone, gone out of their way to show improvement on work or community or manners or honesty, excellence, aspiration and they will get a certificate every week. Uh, moving forward, uh, when we will be allowed, which will hopefully be sooner rather than later, we also offer, offer our fives and, and rewards trips to various places. Thank you very much. Okay, so the way that we're doing Key Stage 3 assessment is actually going to change this year. The reasons for that are that our purpose for assessment is slightly different. We'd like to gain an understanding of how well the students have accessed and learned the curriculums that we've been designing over the past 18 months. We want to ensure that subsequent planning capitalises on what learners know and we are aware that there might be some gaps in knowledge, so part of our assessment at Key Stage 3 is to unpick any gaps from the lockdown. And we want to inform students of their own learning journeys with language that is uh, accessible and easily shared between ourselves, you as parents and the students. And that includes in, um, information that allows them to self-regulate and to actively seek support on their own. In order to do this, we've created the ladder of success. So the information that you receive from school will have a keyword. So our keywords for each one on the ladder are establishing, developing, securing, mastering and excelling. So we'll start with establishing, which means the student shows some simple signs of accessing our curriculum. And that goes up to the top with excelling, the student is able to show a thorough and detailed understanding of the curriculum. So one of the things that we've done differently this year is instead of taking into account one exam at the end of half term, is to take in all of the assessment that we do at Key Stage 3. And we know that your students work hard in classes and our teachers work hard to constantly assess where there are any gaps. And we do that through pre-assessment, which is pre, uh, low stakes pre-planned tests. So quizzes, multiple choice questions and question and answer sessions. We do it through regular formative assessment, so lots of low stakes testing that's spaced out over time. So there's no stress and anxiety, we encourage making mistakes and we learn to unpick those mistakes together. We do this through disciplinary tasks, so for example in PE this might be a practical task that is assessed as a group. And then all of this assessment comes together to give us a cumulative summative exam score, which I'll go through in a second. And this means that we take the structural knowledge that your students learn all through that year and we turn it into a percentage. So for each one of the ladder, you'll see that there is a, an attached percentage. So if your cumulative exam score for the year in that subject comes in at 39% or below, your student will be on the establishing rung. And what we hope to see is that students gradually progress through each rung as the year goes on. This can mean that in year seven, a student might be at securing by the time that they leave year seven, and it could go down to develop in the year after, that's absolutely fine. What we're using this ladder is to judge within one year 
how successful the student has been at learning that curriculum for that subject. What I would just add is for each of these assessments it's a disciplinary knowledge, so that means that it's subject specific knowledge. Your child might be exceptional in English but struggling maths and what we want to make sure is that we're able to identify those gaps so we, with you as partners, can address them as soon as possible. If you do have any questions about the reports that you receive or any of the assessment that we do at Brighton and Crompton, please feel free to get in touch through your year leads and we'll address any issues you've got through uh, Ed, my Ed as well. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Miss Jacob and I'm going to talk to you about how as an academy we want to improve communications with you, the parents. We know that sometimes emails may get stuck in the junk boxes, maybe sometimes texts don't get through. So what we really need is your help and support in downloading the Maya app. It's really, really simple and easy to do, but what it means is that you will be constantly updated on how your child is doing, what their attendance is and what their behaviour is. So, the positives to this app are it allows your information to keep up to date with what's going on. We will send all messages to you via MyEd. It lets you look at key information for your students, for your children, and what they are doing and how they are behaving. It also means that you will get free messages to school, but also from school, so but also you can send us messages and they will be picked up. So what we do, and this is what it will look like, it will give you an attendance. So, for example, this student here has come to 95%, and that's uploaded and updated every single day. It will tell you about all the forms that need to be filled in and all the um, parental student questionnaires that we need to support on, but also how your child is doing, because every lesson they get given a grade, and that will be updated so you can see, again, how well they're doing and have those conversations with them. So, to get this MyEd app, it's really simple. You go to your app store, you download the MyEd app, you search for Royton and Crompton, you enter your contact details, and it's as simple as that. So, please help us to improve our communications. Please download the MyEd form, or sorry, the MyEd app, and let's make sure that our communication lines are really good, up and running, and are open at all times. Okay, so just to say, finally, thank you for you know, spending the time this evening to go through each of the presentations. I hope you found all the information useful, and um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to keep in touch. This is your school, it's the school and you know, that we promise to deliver a quality of education and enriching experiences for your son and daughter and therefore your, your voice does count so please stay in touch and as I said earlier, uh, earlier in the presentation, contact Heads of Year or the Senior Link for each year group and we will only be too happy to help. Thank you.